there are some lies in our science books. Taught it for 15 years. Even though I'm not teaching it anymore, I still like to study. It's so many neat things to learn. And we're going to cover some of that tonight. Perception is being managed. We are being steered and guided by a hidden hand. The whole world has been duped by the media that is not real. <laughs> smart thinking, possible time traveler, smart thinking. That night, boom, contact memory. And then do, Alex, if you don't agree, you'll be sent to a re-education camp. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I've lost my touch with the baby. Experts are suggesting that we're in a golden age of shape-shifting reptilian sightings. Now, why is that? I was, and still am, a huge conspiracy guy. I literally ran out of new tin hat topics to research. It was most definitely not capable of melting steel. Then I would be a crackpot if I thought that was that was the Welcome case. Welcome to the Hypothetical was, Institute, was, a podcast was, about conspiracies. My name is Luke. I'm salty. I'm Cam. <laughs> Sorry, I got a van update from my coworker. Hiya. Another update. She she got another car so she doesn't have to park the van. I don't know. Whatever. How is everyone? <laughs> Are you going to cut that out? We'll see how we go. All I'm right, still trying we'll to figure out what the thing you said was right before you started, Cam. Grab a boy. What, what, what is, is what that? Is... That's the topic. Ah, I thought it was TikTok. Today we're talking about... TikTok, manifestation, and Grabavoy codes. Okay. What's Grabavoy codes? I didn't think that was part of this. Is this part of this? Yes, that was the actual topic. That oh, was okay. Proposed. <laughs> I just looked at TikTok manifestations. Yeah. But they're, all right. They're manifesting with Grabavoy codes. Oh, is that like the start of all this? Yes. Okay. I just watched. Really, really annoying people on TikTok is all yeah. I did for this. Oh, well, then you've missed out on this whole other level of Russian weirdness. And I know huh. you I know you love hanging shit on Russians. Hey, Luke, yeah, it's have, fair. Have you seen that guy on TikTok who eats all the chilies? I know. And he's like, he's he's got this really aggravating voice. And he's like, a habanero chili with Mama Liz's chili oil. And he dips the chili in chili oil and goes, oh, 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 and like eats it, like writhing in like pain. But then he's just like, oh, 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 and makes all these noises. Is this a sex thing? No, no. Like it's this fucking old gross bloke. <laughs> <laughs> Smashes smash heaps of chilies dipped in chili oil. Huh. Oh, it's, it's not, it's unpleasant to watch. But you've still been watching them. But I've watched a bunch of them, yeah. <laughs> Is TikTok a big part of TikTok? Is what I found is hate watching things. Yeah, <laughs> you just I'm so mad at this. I'm going to keep watching it. <laughs> like you know when when you see an ad on TV and there's something about the ad that really annoys you. Yeah. And every time it comes on, you just stop everything you're doing. I'm going to watch this ad. Yeah. And get annoyed by it. That's TikTok. Yeah. And then you're like, I'm never ever going to fucking buy this product ever just because of this ad. But yeah. in a way, that's their ad working. Yeah, because you're thinking about it constantly. Because you're thinking about it. Yeah. So, I propose that we do the topic of Grabavoy codes. Apparently, nobody paid attention to that. <laughs> uh, well, Robo, that's good. You can did, tell us what well, Grabavoy codes are. What did you find out about? Let's we'll get into Grigory Grabavoy a bit later. What did you find out about manifestation on TikTok? There's not a whole lot to this one. Um, I'm well. glad. <laughs> <laughs> turns out there's good episode, boys. <laughs> turns out there's fifty percent more that I didn't realize. Um, basically a big trend on TikTok is people, uh, probably like mostly girls, teenagers and women about in their late teens, early twenties doing manifesting. Um, there's like, uh, where there, it's basically the secret, right? Vision board stuff. Yeah. But the there's different attraction and positive yeah, thinking. Yeah. There's different, different methods that are going around and I watched a lot of people kind of rating the methods. Uh, there's the three six nine method. I don't know what that was. I think you you write something down three times. You write down the result or the action six times, and then the intended result 
nine times. Right. It's not 369 yeah. Mafia, isn't that a thing? No, that's 36 Mafia. Ah. There's Takeshi 69. Right. Uh, there's a circle method. I didn't write down what these actually are. Uh, something where you, th- you think think something for 17 seconds then wait 51 seconds and then think it again. Yep. Don't uh, think about it for 16 seconds and then not for, at all. and then wait for 50 seconds. You fucking idiot. <laughs> um there's a lot of like interact with my TikTok to lock in your manifestation. Oh, that's so they, good. So they do Yeah, that's that's genius content where they go um you know people have really trouble manifesting so I've created a space where you can manifest your positive thoughts. Um, into this TikTok, so interact with this TikTok, and they, you know, leave a pause or whatever, and then I've just manifested with you. Interact for it to make it work. Oh, Does interact mean like like it or something? Yeah, you can you can like or comment. That's yeah, right. genius. Or follow. Yeah, absolutely. That's I mean that's that's the that's what you want out of your content: people to like, comment, or follow. Yeah. Should we um, just leave a quick space in this podcast for people to manifest? By interacting, maybe chucking us a retweet. Absolutely not. All right. Don't. I don't. I don't want our. I do not want our listeners manifesting anything. <laughs> you don't. You don't want to sully our inter. You don't want sullied interactions on our. No, content. let's do it. Okay. I mean, no. We, okay. Here, here's this. We. You don't have to like our content. You don't have to interact with our content. But we'll just leave a nice little space for you to manifest something, and we'll do it at the same time. Manifest something positive for the next week. How's that? Sounds good. Is this the space? All right. Now. All right. Did you guys do something? Yeah, mine didn't work though. Added in some little you're twinkly s- fucking still here, right, music. What? Where would you manifest me to go? <laughs> yeah. um, you I, manifested, I manifested something super positive about <laughs> one of the podcast, li- get, uh, podcast hosts that I'm yeah. with. And then you <laughs> manifested a, a dumb zing on me. <laughs> uh, don't interact with this, like, just as a joke, though. Like, we only want genuine manifestation interactions. Yeah. Yeah. But you, also nope. that manifestation will work if you don't interact. Yeah. So, what else did you find? There, <laughs> there's the, My favourite one is the water one where you use it to jump realities, uh, which is... You know, anything reality jumping is great. So basically this one, you get two cups. Uh, you fill one with water and you write down that cup with your current situation. So you're like, um, you, you fill it up and you're like, oh, I don't have any money. Mm-hmm. And then you have another cup and you put on that cup. Oh, I've got lots of money. I've got too much money. And then you pour the water from the first cup while you're really focusing on the, the positive manifestation into the other cup. And then you, you really charge it up to like put all those positive thoughts in there still and then you drink the water. And by doing so, you jump into a new reality where that's true. Yeah. Or that will become true. Now, in fairness, you are jumping into a new reality where you're hydrated. Which, not if you're already hydrated, which, which can you should he- be. Which can help with a lot of stuff though. But if you're not hydrated, let's face it, if you're doing TikTok manifestations, you're probably not drinking enough water. Yeah. Well, no. I think drinking water, according to this lady that I watched on YouTube, drinking water was important for all manifestations. Mm. But like, all let's face it, all of us are not drinking enough water, right? Not me. I drink plenty of water. Yeah, but most of us. I and you could probably do with drinking a little bit more water away. Oh, I am clammy all the time from the amount of water that I drink. <laughs> okay, well, maybe you need to do a different manifestation, but I would say that most people don't drink enough water, right? Yeah. If the, yeah. If, you know, not people like working in you know cushy beer jobs, but real people out there on the streets grinding, on the grind, on the girl boss grind, are probably not drinking enough water because they're too busy being fempre- fempreneurs. And so... If they start drinking a bit more water, that's going to help them in their life. Yeah, all right. Hard to argue with that. Yeah. And <laughs> hey, I'm an I'm an ally, so I'd never argue with that. It's hard to argue because there's a lot of complicated words like fempreneur in there. <laughs> I kind of lost. I forgot what we we're talking about. I, I'm um, saying if you drink more water, your life's going to improve just by virtue of the fact that you're hydrated. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the 
there was another most of them were just thinking positive thoughts and different methods there's ones where you you write it's called scripting and you write down uh, like a story about you being in the place that you in the place that you wanted to be most of them i think that i saw were people they just wanted more money or more followers mm. uh so you you write like today oh no sorry luke looked out the window and he thought to himself man i'm so glad i've got all this money and followers and then the end yeah kind of a thing uh i need to i need to punch that one up a bit <laughs> but yeah so that's called scripting well i think the ones where they write out what they want and how they're going to get it can often be just a way to process stuff like <laughs> It's, a, it's essentially what a business plan is. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you, you write down your goal and then you write down how you intend to achieve your goal and then you can actually put that plan into motion and then your goal is achieved. It's like, wow, it worked. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't hate these in terms of putting positive thoughts into your brain and setting goals aren't. They're good things, right? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's basically harmless. It's better to mm. think positively than to think negatively. You're going to have more chance of getting what you want done if you're in a positive frame of mind than if you're sitting around going, oh, I can't be fucked doing anything. Yeah. You're not going to do anything. And if I think of like, I know for my, say my work day, um, which I do have a proper work day, Cam, I'm not just living a cushy mm-hmm. beer life. So rocking to work at 10 a.m., sample the new beers. <laughs> yep, exactly how it goes. Um, the, you know, like some, some for a couple of months I'll work really well if I have a list, keep a list of all the things that I do written down on paper and, you know, tick them off as I go. Other times I'll keep that list in an email. Other times I'll put everything into my calendar. So, like, I, I change how I work every few months to kind of keep it new and, and keep, me engaged and you know maintaining that process Mm -hmm. so all these different methods of manifesting are just different ways to keep yourself interested in having posy thoughts uh so yeah i think it's good i'm into it i'm going to start manifesting i think did you find any other ways of manifesting no i did note down that one lady has like a whole bunch of methods her name is aya aya on tiktok she must have gotten pretty early to get that, I guess. Mm. Um, but one of them, she has a beep from a smoke alarm in the background. Like, <laughs> you need to manifest that out of you. Yeah, yeah. I, it's so hard to manifest to, a new batteries. Yeah, manifest your bloody fire extinguisher. Manifest taking the time to fix the the audio problem in your house before recording a TikTok. Um. I also watched this, uh, she's Australian um, and she does a lot of videos. She's got like 300,000 followers on YouTube. Uh, She starts this one and says, everyone knows that I'm a whore for manifestation. Everyone knows manifestation works. And then she tries all the different methods of manifestation and rates them. Um, One that she does the water one, which she rated, I think she rated 10 out of 10. Right. Not maybe nine out of ten because she doesn't normally have enough clean glasses in the house. She <laughs> used a water bottle for this, for this one. I can manifest yourself at the sink. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, if I'm honest, uh, her content was very entertaining. She was quite funny. Uh, at first, I'm like, I can't believe this person has four hundred thousand views. Um, but apparently, she did one about positive visualization, like another technique. And people attacked her because they didn't think her accent was real. She thought she was faking an Australian accent, <laughs> which was because she was um, like she was Asian descent. So she, I don't, I'm not sure what part of Asia, but she's Australian. Mm. And so yeah, people like uh, from America and stuff were saying, you know, you're faking this accent. You're not from Australia, which is crazy to me. No one would fake a yeah. Who would an fake Australian an accent? accent? <laughs> like the worst accent to fake. That's fair, uh, Robert. We'll let you have that one. Yeah, uh, but then she did a whole video about that where she's like, "Oh, yeah, I'm actually I'm actually American," and she puts on this obviously fake American accent and then goes to her friend's house, 
and says, oh, hey, I'd be lying to you. I'm actually American. And everyone's like, oh, well, I'm actually British. <laughs> And they do a whole, <laughs> they do a whole skit, which it was really funny. <laughs> this is legitimately good content. Uh, she's super. She's a whore for manifestation as well. Uh, and everyone knows that it works. And you is know, that, sorry, go ahead. She's making good content. So how can I begrudge that? Is this does this also tie into that cook thing we talked about, like probably three years ago? <laughs> About the people who are like cut crashing their cars into poles to jump realities. No, I don't no? think so. I, I I don't remember that that well. <laughs> What's your memory of that? Well, we were talking about people like like quantum suicide or something. Yeah, quantum people suicide. Were, people like saying, "Oh, I had this. I fucking couldn't take life anymore, so I crashed my car into a pole, and then when I come to in the hospital, <laughs> suddenly like uh, Morgan Freeman had died." years ago or some shit like that or some Jackie Chan movie was different. Ah, so it's a Mandela thing. Yeah. It yeah. Was, it was like it was sort like, of like the Mandela effect, but yeah, it was the idea that by killing yourself, you'd wake up in a, like a different reality. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, so it was a bit of a weird one. I think this is this much safer version of this is like <laughs> yeah. having a drink of water and you wake up in a different reality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it was quite funny, this this lady, when she did the water one, she says, like, I don't actually know if I'm in a new reality. I don't really have enough emotions to know. Right. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what your emotions, like in her mind, her, emo- her emotional state would be so much different if you're in a new reality. But she doesn't have enough emotions for that effect to be noticeable. Uh, very complicated stuff. <laughs> But I guess you are in a new reality in the sense of the previous reality, you hadn't drank a glass of water. Mm. You know, you make every choice you make is a different reality, right? Yeah, totally, man. Hey, Robbo, mm. c- can you edit out the uh, iPhone notification noise that came through on my uh, track before? I don't, I don't think I, I heard it. it. Did you hear it? Just if you it. hear it in the edit, just so we don't sound like hypocrites about smoke alarms. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, leaving that in. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of the, the super basic version of uh, TikTok manifesting. Or just manifesting in general. It's just a secret. Yeah. There's also, I guess, the thing of like you see people on, I guess, in, I think Instagram was where I first saw articles written about it where people will be like, um, you know, taking out their whole paycheck for a week and flashing around a big stack of $100 bills to make it look like they had heaps of money. Or like, I think there's places where you can go and rent a private plane just to go sit in. Mm. So you can take photos with your mates to make it look like you're fucking jetting around in private jets so that everyone thinks that you're like super rich, I guess, in the hope that then you become super rich. There is also people, yeah, I've seen people that say that they're a model or they say that, that no, that's right. They, they say that they're getting sent freebies from companies. Yeah. You know, Estee Lauder or, or local, you know, beauty company sent me these this free stuff. Um, here's the unboxing of it, in the hope that other companies see it and go, "Oh, we should send them stuff as well." Yeah, yeah. When feel, they're paying for it, I feel like that's sort of faking it till you make it. And I, yeah, I mean, I see a little bit of when I was looking at manifestation videos, I saw a little bit of stuff where they were like, you know, I manifested it, and then here's the cash that I got. Right. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. I think those are sort of different things. Okay. I guess what we're I mean, talking about those is, are very what we're, what you're talking about there is very practical manifestation. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm this is this is kind of more uh, trying to do a, a long con mm. on mm. your life and everyone around you thinking that that people are just going to start giving you shit. This is more positive, the power of positive thinking. Yeah, although yeah. I reckon you could combine the two concepts and you know do pretty well. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess, and I, while we're calling it TikTok manifestation, TikTok's just the vehicle that people are using to explain the concepts. Yeah. The concepts still exist without TikTok. Uh, yeah, and yeah, 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 I'm sure people are doing this on Instagram as well. So Robert, was there another one that you were going to mention? Oh, uh, I was just going to quickly touch on angel numbers because angel numbers kept on coming up, but it wasn't ever really clear what relationship they had. Um, uh, angel numbers are the same series of numbers that you, so you keep seeing them. So if you keep seeing like, 
five five five. Mm. You know, you look at the clock and it's five fifty five. Eleven. Or whatever. 11. Yeah, and then I think if you keep seeing one particular run, then it becomes your angel number. Right. Which is just Bayer Meinhof or Blue Car Syndrome, right? Yeah. Uh, that <laughs> reminds me. Uh, I don't know if you remember last year during lockdown here. I th- know that some of our listeners will remember these guys, Simon and Simeon, from my Twitter feed. Uh, the like Santa QAnon guy with the big mm. bushy white beard uh, and his like sort of quite intense friend who drove down from Queensland when they locked down the housing towers <laughs> here in Melbourne That's and they were right. going to take on the cops. <clears throat> Where we go one, we go all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that was quite funny about them is that I found out sort of along the way is that Simeon, the sort of intense guy, was like obsessed with uh, 1111, 111, 222, 333. And anytime they would like shoot a video, they would like have to stop on the side of the road and wait sometimes for like up to 50 minutes for it to get around to the right time. So like if if you had an idea for what he wanted to say at like, 11.09, 11.09, that was fine. <laughs> you could just jump on camera and be like, it's 11.11 and, uh, yeah, this is what we're going to do with General Flynn. But if it was like 11.22, it's like, we're going to wait 50 minutes <laughs> right, <laughs> for 12.12 for to roll around. That seemed just a complicated way to live your life. It was, and it caused a lot of tension between him and Simon, who, let's face it, was also like not 100% you know, with it. <laughs> mm. Like, both of these guys were pretty loose. Uh, but, yeah, that was just a little bit too loose for Simon. That's funny. Although What's I happened was, to them? Have they? Well, they, well so s- they split up. Uh, oh. the, the sort of intense guy went back to Queensland via Canberra where he did have a, a stay in uh, Canberra's uh, psychiatric institutions. Okay. For a short while, he was picked up outside of like Parliament House where he was telling them about how, uh, you know, he was on a special mission from the president. Mm. And it's sort of weird because it's like he obviously was a QAnon guy and he was getting like, he his whole thing was about getting messages from General Flynn and stuff. But he also, I think he told them he'd gotten messages from the president and they're like, all right, chuck him in the loony bin. But he was on like the president, the Donald Trump mailing list. So he's like getting emails from the president. <laughs> right. Uh, then he went back to Queensland. Simon got uh, busted doing something sort of unrelated to anything else. I th- He got arrested for like... Um, allegedly uh, obtaining money through deception, I think the charge the cop mentioned. He was live streaming when he was arrested, so that's how I know that. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he got put on like really strict bail conditions where he wasn't allowed to go online basically and his court date is coming up in a few weeks. Wait, was that the arrest that he was like super polite to the cops? Yeah, because the cops come in and he's like sort of, trying to explain to them, you know, we're both under orders here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm also on official business right now. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I, I understand you've got to, you know, you've got to go through the motions of what you're doing, but uh, what you need to understand is I'm also, on, you know, on a mission for the president. So, yeah, that's what's going on with him. I think it's, yeah, it's not too long now until his court date. Uh, hopefully, at least the the one in the, the psychiatric here gets the help that he needs. Yeah, I, th- I think he is hopefully getting that. Last I checked, he, he was sort of out of the whole thing. So that's good. Mm, mm. Uh, yeah, anyway, angel numbers, uh, lots of re- recurring numbers. They keep them coming up in the manifestations. I think some of the manifestations are built around angel numbers or repetition. Um, it wasn't really 100% clear how it all tied in. But again, I, this is all, you know, people making it up on the fly anyway. So, All right. So... Can what I tell you, you about Grabovoi codes? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. So these are codes. This is this is something that goes back to I think the nineties. 
is when these is when Grigory Grabovoy first starts coming up with this stuff. Grabovoy codes on TikTok basically it's about uh, achieving the correct vibrational frequency within yourself so that you can achieve whatever you want, and you can do this by putting getting these specific codes. There's a bunch of different numbers, lots of different recipes. So you, there's like a code for getting rich, a code for you know good health, a code for avoiding the Rona a code for curing cancer, a code for you know anything you could possibly think of, there is a code for. And then you need to write down the code or put it in a special circle or a lot of them are writing it on their arms, which is a little bit weird. Writing numbers on your arms sort of has connotations. Uh, and then you really concentrate on it and then that helps you adjust your vibrational frequency to the correct vibration to manifest whatever it is that you wanted. So it's a, basically it's a cheat code for reality mm. that you can input and uh, get specifically what you want. Right. So what's the, I, what's I the watched, code for blood? What's the code for blood? Yeah. You want to get blood? You, get blood? you know, if you want, if you want blood, like I'm like going around and there's no blood, but I want blood like in Mortal Kombat. A B A B B A B. You just I think In my mind I'm like, man, Salty wants to manifest blood. That's he's got he's so much more metal than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Damn, he's cool. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean, I was thinking of, like, The Sims putting in cheat codes and Salty right. just goes to Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Wait, there's a Sims cheat code where you can get blood everywhere? No, there's not. <laughs> That's why, <laughs> if there was, though. <laughs> anyway, uh, I watched a whole bunch of these TikToks. Uh, 5207418 is the code for unexpected money. Ooh. I watched a great one. Say that one again. Uh, 5207418. Well, make sure you grab a crystal pen because that'll really uh, help lock it in. I, I watched a few videos from someone who sells these crystal pens that have like crystals in them. Okay. So, like, supercharge. Like, all bones. Yeah, crystals. anything you're writing down will get supercharged because it's, you know, going the thoughts going through the crystal to the ink. Mm, that sounds pretty good. I watched this one where they're like, you know, I put in this code to find like unexpected money. And then I called up my dad and I was like, can you send me some money? And then the next thing that happened was there was all this money in my bank account. <laughs> it's like, whoa, that's crazy. So hang on. If you do the code and then have someone rich send you money or richer yeah. than you at least, yeah. or even poorer than you send you money, you'll get so more his, money. his money manifest code is his dad's mobile number. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if, if you find a method that works. Yeah. So this is, yeah, this is the really big one on TikTok is these numbers and it's fairly harmless, but it does have this sort of dodgy past, which is that it all comes from the teachings of this guy from Russia. Well, actually, he's originally from Kazakhstan uh, called Grigory Petrovich Grabovoy, uh, who has at times claimed to be the second coming of Jesus Christ. And also says that he can resurrect the dead, which got him into a little bit of trouble uh, about 15 years ago when he promised uh, the mothers of the victims of the school siege in Russia that he mm. could resurrect their children from the dead and took, okay. a, and took a bunch of cash from them for the purposes of doing that. Right. So they locked him up. Mm. Did, so he actually went through the... Pr the resurrection process, or he just took the money and then left? He took the money and then uh, I don't think provided any proof that he had actually resurrected anyone. He might, I don't know, he may have tried to resurrect people. Yeah, I guess that he, was the question. He, he definitely took the cash. Yeah, that's not ideal. So don't, don't trick people into false hope that you're going to resurrect their dead children. Mm. That's, look, that's probably one of the worst things. He's really weird, though, because he's from Kazakhstan. He moved to Russia. But I think he, he also spent some time in Ukraine and as well as Uzbekistan. But it's this weird thing, like, post the fall of the Soviet Union, it seems like they were, like, 
pretty loose with <laughs> the kind of projects they would uh, people would chuck money at. In 1992, he, or like throughout the early 90s, he got contracts from the National Airline of Uzbekistan to provide um, non-sensory diagnosis of aircraft used for flights by the President of the, of the Republic of Uzbekistan and members of the government. Because also this guy is like a... Um, He's an engineer before he becomes a psychic. Mm. But this was providing like psychic protection for the president's airplane. <laughs> <laughs> but he was getting paid for it. Right. I guess it's a good living if he can make it work. Yeah. He also, in 1996, he had a contract in Uzbekistan to manage uh, the employees of the, like the the airline through contactless psychological work, so just you know, just Wait. a bit of psychic management. <laughs> management like making sure they're hitting their KPIs and giving feedback when they don't. I guess so, but I, <laughs> but, but not psychically, gi- not giving feedback. Yeah, because it's all it's all contactless. So, do we think they knew they were being performance managed psychically, <laughs> or that it was just happening? And Who they were knows? just like, oh man, I'm. I feel like I'm really hitting my KPIs much yeah. better than I was. I feel so much more productive today. Fuck. Yeah. Thanks, Psychic Manager. That last sprint was super quick. <laughs> we managed to get through all our sprints a lot better. So he also he got some work in Russia working on the nuclear program. He became, I'm going to say, the supercharged Peter Brock. Oh, yeah. He, he invented a crystal that you could put into a nuclear power plant right. that would halve the explosion. You know, if the nuclear power plant blew up, this crystal would halve the force of the explosion. Wow. Okay, that's good. That's, that's a good thing. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the idea was the explosion doesn't happen. But if it is going to happen, if there are some measures in place. It's better to be halved. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, yeah, he's one of those guys that's like in Russia after the USSR falls, it seems like they were willing to take on all comers. Like previously things had been quite strict in terms of uh, like Marxist science. Mm. And so after they sort of went a bit too far the other way where they're like, well, you know, if it wasn't allowed because of communism, maybe like this, there might be something to it. We'll chuck a little bit of cash at that. Yeah, right. That- so he, I think he was like in with Putin or like Putin supported him for a bit until he announced that he was going to become a politician and take on Putin. Okay. And that's, that's when suddenly like uh, charging mums to resurrect their children uh, becomes quite bad. <laughs> Wait, is he still alive? Did you say he's still alive? Uh, he got 11 years in prison. So he's out now and he, he's on TikTok himself, I believe. Right, he's, he's pivoted to TikTok. <laughs> but the, so the, someone, he wrote all of these books and one of his books was about uh, coming up with these number codes. Hmm. Uh, he did a book in 1999, Restoring the Human Body by Focusing on Numbers. Uh, I think s- somehow... That made the, someone has picked up on this stuff and like it's made the its way to TikTok. I think it sounds like it might have gone there th- th- via Weibo. Uh, like in early 2020, uh, there was an actor in Hong Kong who was uh, writing numbers on their arm for to protect against COVID, and oh, yeah. that became very popular on Weibo. And I, then I think it's jumped from Weibo over to TikTok. Yep. So what numbers, just just in case. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to check that one but uh i think that's how it, it's gotten on like somehow th- via like china hong kong this sort of old russian book is has made its way in back into the consciousness mm. and like I, I think that on russian like russian social media maybe this stuff had been going around a bit but yeah there's it, it's the people that were doing these grabaway codes always seemed very divorced and like didn't really seem to know anything about this guy. And then he has noticed that 
or has been brought to his attention by journalists that his thing is very popular online and now he's jumped on TikTok as well. <laughs> I kind of like the idea that he's jumped on TikTok and he's doing like, you know, TikTok content. Like uh, yeah, there's a hip hop song in the background. And, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! No no! <laughs> yeah. Did you watch any of his content? I have. I didn't actually check out his content. Hmm. It's probably the illusions. Probably the imagination's probably better than the reality. Yeah. Um, how old is he at this point? Uh, like late fifties. Yeah. Right. So you're saying, I'm not too old for TikTok. If I wanted to jump on and do some content. No, you can get on. Well, yeah, it's like, what do they say? Old people go off on the app? Mm, I don't I've think done, that's true. I've done one TikTok video. Oh, yeah, what was it? Just a time lapse of some artwork that I did. Oh, yeah? Did that pop off? No, not really. Yeah. Let me have sure. a look. I'll tell you my stats. Uh, hang on. Watch me try and get around the app like a fucking boomer. Oh, come on. Here we go. No. <laughs> All right. I did one video. How do I find out when I did it? On the 20th of June. This year? Yep. Mm -hmm. 96 likes. That's pretty good. Is that good? Oh, not in the grand scheme of TikTok. No, but for one, yeah. um, TikTok stressed me out when I tried to use it. It was so rapid. Yeah. Like I signed up and then like immediately before I see anything, just there's a video on my feed and then I tried to move it and there was another video and I'm like, this is too much, this is too much content. The content's coming at me too fast. Yeah. That's kind of how it works. So you swipe it to the next video then you watch a video, you swipe it to the next video. Yeah. I don't need that. But I, if you need, if you need a breather, you just tap the screen and it'll pause. I don't need content this fast in my life. So, yeah, basic. In conclusion, basically harmless. Although, unless you're like you're making money off grieving mothers, yeah. And I did see some people making a bit of money off stuff, but it's like. It's really, I guess this is like the combo with uh, what we were talking about before with the faking it till you make it. Like I was looking at one uh, fempreneur who posts a lot of these codes stuff and also does like um, business coaching and things. Hmm. And it's so hard to tell how successful these people actually are because like she's got all of these... Um, reviews on her website from people who have said that she's helped them but like one of these like the, the biggest review here is from a struggling high performing online business coach uh <laughs> it's like well how high performing were you if you were struggling <laughs> and then like i look into the business coach and she's got like interviews with other people where they're like they're also a struggling online business coach and she's like, oh, you know, I began as an entry level salesperson and then now I'm like slightly higher up in the organization. It, that's that's LinkedIn brain as well. Yeah. Right. Because I, I, I spend, I look at LinkedIn sometimes and there's a world of people there that are like, yeah, the, you know, we're business coaches, we're high performance development people and we're like a lot of people have keynote speaker as like part of their job title. Mm. It's like, that's not, that's not a job. People ask you to be a keynote speaker if you're good at a thing. Yeah. You, you're not a, a keynote. And, but then again, it, it does breed six, you know, you can manifest that, I guess you, you can fake it till you make it. In a well, sense. One of these reviews is who got my first client thanks to your <laughs> thing. Okay. It's like, I don't know, maybe you just got your first client due to doing whatever it is you're doing. And some of these people getting clients, there's like one conspiracy guy in Melbourne who I always see posting this sort of stuff, you know, helped a, you know this business deal go through, blah, blah, blah. It's like, what are you actually doing? <laughs> you, don't yeah. see, you don't seem to have it. Any notice of like any product? Yeah. 
just setting up deals. I think just it's setting a, up some deals. It's a bit of a Trumpian thing as well. Did I posted this on Twitter? This is somewhat related, but not related. The people that on LinkedIn that have sent Gladys Beriglian, Beriglian, sorry, the New South Wales State Premier flowers and notes because she's been doing such a hard job or such a good job in a hard time. Um, both these ladies were lawyers, and they they sent her. One lady sent her flowers. Uh, because her dad used to send prime ministers flowers when they were doing a good job. And the other lady, also a lawyer, um, she posted, a few days before his seventh birthday, my son said to me, Mum, we need to sit down and have a serious discussion. I need you to write a letter to Auntie Gladys to tell her how I feel. Uh, And then she sent Gladys a letter and then got a response back. And someone commented on the the. one of these you know, in the threads and said, is this a PR thing? Why are lawyers sending letters to the premier and getting things like what is happening here? <laughs> but I think it's just organic. These people are just cooked. Uh, people loved it though on LinkedIn. They're like, Oh, you're such a good person. And Oh, what the fuck? These people like, I, I, I know we'll get some hate from our New South Wales listeners, but you people are clearly not locked down hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you should <laughs> taking that letter to the post office is not an acceptable reason to be out of your house. It's not. It's that's that's a reason to be locked in your house harder, locked in a smaller part of your house. All right. So that's also. Yeah, hang on. No. Nah, yeah. Your lawyers. <laughs> like, come on. Don't you have better things to do? Lawyering. Uh, yeah. Do some lawyering. Anyway, that's all right. You can move on, Cam. Right. I'm not moved on, but you can move on. That's can manifestation. So, if people want to <laughs> manifest their way to our socials, uh, they can find us on Hypothepod at Twitter. We're on Facebook. Uh, we are on Patreon. Thank you to Tammy, our cooked sponsor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Robbo, where can they manifest their way to you? You can uh, ale of a time, ale of a time dot com. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'll have a time on, on all the socials. Yeah. Uh, you can get me... Salty. At Saltmarsh on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, andrewsaltmarsh.com. Everything else, I've been sick though, so I've been doing fucking nothing. So don't go there expecting any sort of new content. No no Twitch streaming? I haven't Twitch streamed for nearly a month. Oof. I'm, and I'm hating it. Do you, do you know what I uh, manifested at the start of the show, Salty? When What's we did that? the manifest? Uh, that... My pal Salty gets starts feeling better soon. Oh, thanks, man. You're welcome. So uh, there you go, Cam. Thanks for being here. I hope that you haven't fucked me. it like a birthday wish by saying what it was. No, I think yeah, it's okay. Way to I go, buddy. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you want to find me, just write sex and home on your arm and uh, let the universe do the rest. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Don't Bye. worry about a thing. Except if all our world leaders are alien reptilians. supply contains mind altering drugs don't worry about a thing except whether or not Port Arthur was a false flag operation in which to disarm Australia I said don't worry about a thing I accept you can definitely hear John Lennon say I buried Paul at the end of strawberry fields forever don't worry Except not only did Bush do 9-11, but he also keeps the plane down in Area 51, which let's not forget where all the aliens are. Don't worry about a thing, except Donald Trump is clearly a woman.